You're probably a nerd. You're watching a video about board games. So guess what? You're probably a nerd and you saw from the title that it's about a game about comics. So that's why you're probably watching it about Age of Comics, The Golden Years. What is this game? It is a worker placement game where you are set in the 1930s-ish and you're making up comic books for a company that you own. Who doesn't want to do that? Guess what? I don't know. I'm now rambling, so I'm going to get to it. What is this game? Age of Comics is a worker placement game where you are trying to hire people, develop comics, grab ideas, print your games, and then go get sales. What makes this fun is you have like four characters over five rounds. You have different types of comics. You've got horror, you've got true crime, romance, alien stuff, crime. Did I already say crime? I'm not for sure. Uh, superheroes, why don't I look down at the box? I think that's five. Westerns, that's the one I forgot. Westerns, you are trying to make these books, play them out in front of you. When you hire somebody, you take a writer and an artist. You can either take it from the display or from the top of the deck. That's how you write your book. You've got writers and artists, you need those to print a book. Develop, that's making a comic. All right, you pick a comic you want, the type you want, grab it, put it in your thing. Ideas, you have to have ideas for the comics. You need two ideas to be able to print a book. And to print a book, you have to pay your writers. What, you have to pay people in this game? Yes, in sense. You pay the total number of how good they are. A one, not very good, rookie. Two, ah, eh, they're moderately good. Three, the best you can have, but it costs more. You have three and a three, guess what? Six cents. I think it's cents, they're coin money, so that's what I took it as. Then, you get to place your comic onto the track, depending on if the artist and the writer match the book type that you're trying to sell, it gets more fans. So if you're trying to make a horror book and you have a horror comic, a horror writer, and a horror artist, you get three fans immediately. There's other ways to get more fans. We'll get into that later. You put your comic down, end of the round, you get points for it and monies because people bought your book. That is the base game. More comics, more money, more fans, better. But at the end of every round, you also lose a fan because no one wants to keep buying the same book over and over. You're gonna lose fans throughout the time because that's how things work. Overall, I really enjoyed that aspect of the game. It is what I, when I saw this game from my friend Scott who let me borrow it, I was like, yes, this is fun. You're making comics. This is awesome. Yet, there's other things you have to do. The never fun things that Euros always make you do so you win. If you just wanna have fun, do the comic side. If you wanna win, you gotta go make sales. What are you talking about sales? There's Manhattan on the board. You have to go through Manhattan finding people who want levels of artists and artwork that you have. The number you pay for your writer and artist, that's what you have to get to get more fans from the board. You go to a section of town, you flip over a tile, it says three plus one fan. You have to have at least three on those two numbers that you had earlier from your artist and your writer. Then you get it, put it on top of your thing. And guess what? New fan, raise it up. If you do four, you get a fan. Five, you get two fans. Six, I think you get three fans or four fans. It's ridiculous. The higher number your comic is, the more fans you get and the more money you get. At the end of the game, fans and monies are points. Let's say you don't have any ideas. You don't wanna make any new comics. You're like, ugh, this other thing this other guy has is pretty good. I got writers to match it. I can't find a book to match it. Guess what? You don't need to. You can steal ideas in this game. Boom! Just like Marvel and DC stealing each other over the years, you can do it too in this game. You can steal ideas. All you have to do is print, pay the people, and then throw the book out there. It's not as good as quality as the original. Of course not. It's a knockoff. It's bad. But you can get two fans for it immediately. Put it out there. Guess what? Then after that, you can go to town. Find people who want fans. Tell them that your book is better than theirs. Go and get fans, throw it on there. Now your book is better than the original and no one will know which one came first because it's all confusing because that's what comics do. All right, that is basically how you play the game. Five rounds. Overall, I really enjoy this game. Um, I like worker placement games. It itches that spot in my brain. The artwork is great. It's got this like pulpy feel. All the comics feel like they came from that era. Uh, it's all non-IP stuff. They made it and created it. It's fun. 
It's great. The titles are just hilarious. The titles fit what the genres are. It's great little artwork. You just look at it and go, oh man, this is great. There's little comics that you can slide up and down with the same thing. It's all very tactile, very feely on your hands and you're moving everything around. So I really like the artwork in this game. And yes, I like worker placement. So those two things really make this game set out for me. Um, those are just fun. So artwork, worker placement. As I mentioned, you can do ripoffs. I actually really like that. I don't know if they're really good for winning the game, but it is just fun making ripoffs of other people's comics and trying to make it better than theirs. I enjoy that. I don't know why, it's just fun. Your friend has a really good comic. You're like, man, yeah, okay, whatever. I don't have the book I need. Here it is. I have a superhero. What you gonna do? I'm gonna get all these tokens, slap it on there. It's now an eight. Boom, I'm winning because of a ripoff. Every time I do the knockoffs, I've not really won the game, but it's fun to do, and that's what's important with games, isn't it? Fun. Here are the issues I think people are going to have with this game. Randomness. Every turn, you only flip over three artists and three writers. Those are the ones you can see for the entire round. No more. So if you don't see what you have right there, you've got to go and get it in the deck. If you're trying to make a set and you just need that one artist and it has to be of a specific type and it's not showing, you have to gamble and hope that it's off the top. If it's not there, you're going to have to either make an inferior book and hope that you can change it later because it's going to be painful. Same way with the comics. You have your three. You have the top of the deck. You can pay four to cycle and just get the one you want, but that means you have less money for your artists and writers. And in the beginning of the game, if you don't find that right book, it makes it a little bit harder for you to get your engine going. Because you need to get that money coming in to get more books out there, to get it flowing, get more ideas. Also with the ideas, if you don't grab the right ideas that you think you're going to use, and you end up getting different writers and you're trying to scramble to get it, you've wasted a turn just grabbing tokens that you might use later, but you might not. I understand at the end of the game, there are victory points for them, but sometimes if you don't like randomness, it's gonna affect you in this game heavily. I do not mind randomness. I like randomness because it causes a variability and makes you think on your feet and change. Sometimes I'm not really great at changing my ideas and uh, I kind of get behind, but guess what? It's a game. That's what we're supposed to do. That's why I'm, that's what you do to learn with the, win the game. Change it up, you gotta figure it out. The second thing I think people might have a problem with is the fact that you have the one Euro thing that every Euro does that you have to do that you don't wanna do. I just wanna go make comics. I wanna go ahead and do all that aspect of it. Sure, that's probably not the best game. And when they were developing it, they were like, oh, we need to add one more thing in here to make it so people can push and win and just not have comics out there because that could get very boring very quickly. I understand that. I just wanna do that, and but sometimes you just have to take turns, go over there, grab some books, hopefully that you can get it and push one or two up so that you can win. I get why they put it in there. I understand why it's in there. I don't mind doing it, it's just, it's always that thing with Euros, there's always that one step that you have to do that you're just like, I don't wanna go over there, but I'm gonna do it anyways, because I have to. It's in here, all Euros, that one step, it's here. Nitpicky thing people might not like, the tokens themselves. The little comic books are great, the little tokens for ideas are great, but they get messy. They're gonna get all messy, and if you have OCD, you're gonna be messing with those tokens the entire time because they will fall over, they will slide around. There's nothing you can really do. It's part of what it is. I mean, I don't know what you they could have done differently. It's fine. It's just that if you want a nice little stack, which my brain wants sometimes, it's gonna take you distracted for a minute. You're gonna spend three minutes trying to get all the little stacks in a row and all organized, and then one will slide over and hit another one, and you're just like, oh, I just wasted more time doing that. Arr! And it might distract you. But those are the three things I'm not a big fan of in this game. But overall, I really enjoy this game. Uh, there is variability in this game. There's different modules in the game as well. There's a war module, because in the 30s, there, 30s and 40s, there was some kind of a war or something? So they put that in there, so you can add that in. Um, also, there's artists that are split between two different genres you can get, and then that I can change it up. And also, there's um, objectives you can put in the game if you want. So there's a lot of different things you can add into this game. I do worry a little bit about how much samesiness this will get after a while, even with those in there. I've played it about six times. I'm still not tired of it. So 
I'm wondering after like 20, 20 plays, if you're just like, ah, it's just gonna sit there on the shelf and just not move. That would be my only concern, but if you just want a game where you're gonna get like 20 plays in and you're like, hey, I got my money's worth out of this, get it. Overall, I am glad Scott picked this up. We enjoy playing it. I wanna play it again. I've had it in my head the entire time since we've played it. For those of you that like to play with yourself, guess what? There is a solo mode. It is a fun mode. It's got cards, you flip over, it's an autonomous system. I called it Janiel. So I'm playing against Janiel every time. I did a video about it. Go watch that one. Please, it doesn't have a lot of views right now. Go watch that one. All right, let's go over everything I've said about this game. Final judgment. You like worker placement games? It's good. Do you like comics? It's good. Do you like to play with yourself? That option is good as well. Do you like modules? It's got modules. Awesome. Is it a little bit too much random? You could say that. Is it little bits all flying around everywhere? Yeah, you could say that. Overall though, I would say this is a really good game. I would give it a score of 83 out of 10 because scores really don't matter when it comes to this. Just everything if you like, if what I've said, go get it. If you don't like randomness, maybe try it out with a friend. Maybe uh, Scott will let you come over and play it. So Age of Comics, Excelsior. Uh. I'm sorry, that was disgusting. Uh. That was overly disgusting.